All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order, verify compliance with open meetings law, and then adopt the agenda. You can all stand for the pledge. Rowdy. Holy oh, yeah. shit. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Tribute to 9-11, I would like to read a poem that was written by Alan Jankowski. It's called, We Shall Never Forget. Let the world always remember the faithful day in September. And the ones who answered the duty's call should be remembered by us all. Who left the comfort of their home to face perils as yet unknown, an embodiment of goodness on a day when men's hearts have gone astray. Sons and daughters of me and you who never questioned what they had to do, who by example were a source of hope, and should be fathers who could not cope. Heroes that would not turn their back with determination that would not crack, who bound together in their ranks and asking not a word of thanks. Men who bravely gave their lives, whose orphaned kids and widowed wives can proudly look back on their dad, who gave the country all they had. Actions taken without regret, heroism shall never forget. The ones who paid the ultimate price, let's never forget their sacrifice. And never forget the ones no longer here who fought for the freedoms we all hold dear. May they never, never wane. So thank you to all those that continue to serve us, and obviously our thoughts and prayers are with those uh, who lost members there or the souls of those that uh, did pass away that day. So uh, thank you. Item three is comments from the audience regarding agenda items. I don't see anyone in the audience to take comments. So... We'll move on to <coughs> item number four, student and staff spotlight. That's an item principles and principles of thoughts on the start of the school year. So, uh, ooh, Hales Corners is listed as one, so Lori, you're up. Hello, everyone. Um, it's been a great start. It's been a great start to the school year. Sorry. I'm going to do that. Now it's been a great start to the school year. Um, been able to visit every classroom and um, our lunchroom each day. Um, as of today, 647 students, K-4 through 5th grade. Um, last Friday, we had our PBIS kickoff, um, which you might have read about in um, the Connect. Um, this year, um, every year we have a song that our music teacher teaches the students, and then we um, do our own choreography to it. And it's quite a, it's quite a, it's interesting to see all of us dancing in the gym and this year the song is try everything and it really is that message of you know it's okay to fail it's it's you're gonna give it a try and if you can't we're gonna pick you up and we're gonna figure out um, what you need to do next so it's a great theme and it's a great message for our kids and um, it was a really fun um, kickoff and um, I would say also that field trips are already underway. We had some students uh, visit our Hills Corners library so, um, and get their library cards as first graders that didn't have theirs already. So we're making sure that we've got to focus on learning as well um, beyond the school day and using a great resource of our Hills Corners library. Thank you, Lori. <coughs> Next will be Chris with Edgerton. Hello. Welcome to the start of a new year. Um, I would concur with Lori 100%. I always love the start of a new year, especially at the elementary level. If you can see the first days through the eyes of K-4 <coughs> families, um, our parking lot is absolutely jam-packed. I don't think you can find a parking spot for miles. Um, so uh, it was wonderful, wonderful start. All hands are on deck those first few days, especially uh, making sure that those important routines are in place for our kids. Um, just like uh, Lori said, we started our PBIS kickoff uh, last week. This year, this is our second year at Edgerton with PBIS, and we are uh, fully implementing uh, all phases of PBIS this year. Um, so that started off really, really well. We played a game of Family Feud with the kids, and they really enjoyed that. Um, our PTO had a back-to-school picnic on Friday. It was very well attended, uh, food and games, and just an opportunity for staff and, and students and families to enjoy that first week back. And just like um, Lori said, we're off and having some field trips as well. Last week, Friday, our third grade went down to Indian Summer, 
and there was new learning for our third graders, learning about uh, new cult, uh, learning about uh, the culture of out of our Native American tribes. So, um, off to a great start this year. Thank you, Chris. Next will be Laura for the middle school. Hi. It's been a very exciting start to our school year. We've been working hard to be really unified in our approach to everything that we're doing. And so our, we have a theme this year and it's called Love Your People and we're using it with staff and with students and it's been very positively received. And so the kids have been pretty amazing. I have to say we had some warnings maybe about certain groups of students that had been challenging in the past and we're using this theme to really think about how are you loving your people and how is your what you're doing showing us that you're loving us and they get it they're thinking about it and we're really having great conversations and the behaviors have turned around already so we're very excited and PPIS has been kicked off in a very strong way with our flight plans the first couple days so everyone's on the same page and we all know our expectations and we're going to continue to share the message with parents so they can reinforce that at home. Thank you. And finally. Good evening. So at the high school, we've, we've had a lot going on. Um, we started off our year with the Eclipse and had our science club participate with a, a very fun barbecue banquet time for uh, the science club and students to come and see the Eclipse. So the, the students really enjoyed that. Um, our sports seasons are underway and doing very well. Um, all of our sports teams <clears throat> are doing phenomenally well this year. Uh, our football team's doing well. Swim, volleyball, each each school is each uh, sports doing very very well. Uh, seminar classes have started this year. The feedback we're getting from students so far is that it's very positive. They're enjoying those courses, uh, particularly the uh, superhero class. I get a lot of feedback that that's a class they're enjoying <coughs> right now. Um, this morning we had our, our first parent meeting, uh, muffins with mom and donuts with dad, and so uh, pretty good turnout for that and had a nice conversation with fam uh, families today and uh, learned some feedback about our parking lot and other things like that that we're still working to address. Um, and then for your knowledge, homecoming is going to begin on the 19th that week. We've got uh, pajama day, class color day, America day. Uh, and then on Friday is when we're having our all-school pep rally, the parade, the football game, and on Saturday is the dance. The theme this year is a night in New Orleans. Thank you. And thank you all for the great start of the year. Uh, I don't yeah, go ahead. Did anyone get any feedback about starting on Friday? I've gotten some mixed feedback. Some some students uh, didn't quite understand why they would need to come. Granted, those were a lot of the upperclassmen who were here for a half day on the Friday afternoon. Uh, but I, I got a lot of feedback from parents of ninth graders, particularly that their their kids felt um, prepared for school because of that morning having the opportunity to to really walk through the school day and get to be familiar with their locker and um, their classes before. The rest of the students showed up. I received a lot of feedback uh, from home about starting on Friday. Chris? It, it actually went better than I thought it was going to go. Um, <coughs> it did feel a little bit like two first days, but I love the first day of school. So um, it, it was fine. Uh, family seemed really happy just to have um, either to be seeing their kids go off to school in some cases, um, but otherwise, you know, that first day is special no matter what. So I, I, I didn't hear any negative feedback, and I thought attendance was actually um, better than I thought it was going to be. I would agree. I mean, we heard a little complaining, but um, very little, and I think that once everybody was in, they were just happy to be there, and, you know, all the new supplies and new teachers and new faces, it, it got underway <clears throat> just fine. Yeah, the one feedback I got was that... Um, he has, he has three children at, at Edgerton, and it was a really nice way to just ease into it. And he said his kids were raring to go by Tuesday, and, and it was a great way to kind of ease into it. So, so be it. And as a parent of a sixth grader, um, he loved the fact that they just got to go through the day without any seventh and eighth graders there because they had the whole day. So he, he actually enjoyed that to get to go from class to class. And, 
get a feel for it. And he's like, it was completely different on Tuesday, but he said um, it was good to at least have gone through the motion, see where the classes are, just get a feel for getting to his locker and getting in and out of his locker. So it was good. Okay. Uh, so item five is reports. Uh, no committee reports for 5A tonight. Uh, 5B is a superintendent report. Um, so in the packet, you can see that um, there, are, there are goals there. And the first four pages in the goals sort of look at last year's goals, if you remember that. And we've, uh, I went through those monthly. But this is sort of uh, looking back at all of them. Each of the goals, a summary of the things that were accomplished. Um, and then implications for each of those goals, things that either didn't get accomplished or that we learned about going through that process um, in terms of putting together our 17, 18 goals. And so the first four pages basically take the district goals from last year. So starting on page five is where the 17, 18 district goals will start. And um, a little bit different format. I mean, some of the same things as last year with some indicators of success. Um, specifically putting um, people responsible and then some tentative timelines those will obviously things might get done earlier or we might need to adjust them based on some other circumstances um, you'll see the the goals that are highlighted in gray were the ones that the boards had specifically um, given to me as superintendent I thought it was important to see those in the context of all the goals and how they fit in under those four pillars that the district had been using in terms of um, areas to, to sort of group those together so I think um, we had talked about right now um, still understanding our data. And so um, at the back to school August launch, um, I sort of talked to the, the um, staff about that redefining ready scorecard that we've looked at here for a couple times and how we're not at a place where we know our data well enough to know what we need to improve on. So you won't see a goal that says improve ACT by 0.8 points. We're just not there yet because we haven't said that we don't know if that's a priority. We haven't looked at our data to know whether that's a priority. We looked at the college career readiness things. What is a priority? So you will notice that through the goals this year is to analyze our data and to set benchmarks, baselines for a lot of that data. So you will see um, metrics developed next year. We're just not at a point. I mean, I could randomly say we're going to take this and improve our ACT or have so many more kids par participate in co-curriculars, but that wouldn't be a collective vision. That would be just something that either I or administrators put together. So you will see that the goals are set up for our staff and the board to get engaged of looking at those metrics and deciding what are our priorities as a community that we want to look at that. Um, we just received our ACT scores. Um, again, it's from the class of 2017. So for the most of them, they took their ACT when they were juniors, so it isn't a surprise. So it would have been the juniors that just took it is the one that we're looking at, and that's the one that will come out shortly. But the class, remember, ACT has two, two grades now that we're looking at. The, the seniors who really two years ago is when you saw their scores, and then our juniors that just took it in the spring, which is the most impactful one last school year. We're focused on the juniors. So we're going to look at that data. We'll bring it forward. We also have our um, forward exam from our elementary schools, um, and we are starting um, – our STAR testing, which is our MAP testing at our elementaries, and we're going through grade 10 this year to start to get some baseline data for academic achievement. We haven't gone into our high school with formative data up until this year. So we're collecting as much achievement data to really figure out where that is, but I think we've had some conversations about it's not just about a test score. There are other values and things that we want to look at, and so we have to decide what that is as we walk through some of those things in redefining ready. So. I think a lot of the staff um, understood that and appreciated that. I think um, if you remember back to last June 15th when we said, what is the one thing that we're known for? People struggled a little bit about defining what that one <coughs> thing was. Um, and I think that's part of our goal and vision to figure out what it is. I mean, I think you could talk about some districts who have that one, you know, if, it's a, if they go after the college readiness. I even asked um, right off the bat our staff how many students go on to post-secondary education and I think one of our counselors can answer that question that's an answer that all of us should have if we know what our goal is and so we've got some work to do in that in that realm um, and so that's what this year's looked like so the goals will sort of follow that in those areas so I'll just quickly talk through them I'm not going to read all of them to you but under student achievement um, and readiness 
I think one of the things that we've, uh, we know that we need to do, both by board policy and because we're behind in it, is we need to do a curriculum audit across the board right now um, to have um, curriculum that's readily accessible. If somebody came in and said, let me see your third grade science curriculum, exactly what are we teaching on a daily basis? It's not necessarily exactly in the same place. Um, and we need to make sure that what we're doing is consistent across the board. So we're doing what we call a curriculum audit across the board to make sure that for every grade level and every subject that we um, are well aligned to what we should be teaching and then be able to tell where some gaps are and where, where students are because all of those things in terms of what assessments we're giving to determine benchmarks for that, we just need to clean that up a little bit. So what you see something there called a curriculum audit. Um, and then how does that work with our personalizing learning? The second goal that you will see there um, has to do with um, academic levels, uh, remediate achievement and learning gaps. I think in July we talked about the RTI process and areas of the continuum both for our gifted learners and students who are struggling. And so in order for us to look at our curriculum, we need to be able to determine where the achievement gaps are. And, and uh, you heard a presentation last spring on EduClimber to be able to have a little bit more data to identify all of the continuum of learners right now. And so that's part of our goal, to have a plan so our student or our teachers get much more comfortable in identifying where the learner is on the continuum in terms of, of, of um, accelerating it, not just saying, I'm going to hold you here until the rest of the class catches up or, or whatever that might be. So, the second item has to do with having high academic um, standards, but, yes, but also identifying any learning achievement gaps that we might have in the district. The third one is one that the board had talked about in terms of um, career readiness. And so we've talked about adding a CT coordinator and then starting to really manage our work-based learning opportunities for our students with the academic and career plans that are being required and our business partnerships with that. And so that falls into the student readiness in terms of the redefining ready report card to make sure that we can say that all of our students are career ready regardless of what their immediate plans are after high school. So we're going to start to look at that um, and that um, you can see that it's a sign there as far as what does that look like for every student. Um, underneath communications, We've um, added a couple things under our um, con continue with some of the communications that we started last year. Um, our wit in a window, which was called the viewpoint before. Um, our, our newsletter um, will be getting will be coming out quarterly. We're just getting ready to get one sent to the printer right now. Our website redesign, and then also we heard from both our staff and parents last year when we did the survey of finding a way of. Um, recognizing and celebrating all the good things that are going on in the district and finding a, a much easier platform than just social media. So I think those are the things we're going to highlight in addition to all of the other communication that we've started. Um, the second piece of it is related specifically to the um, referendum plan. Um, and so that re relates to some of the um, communication pieces that, that you will see under the indicators of success. Uh, making sure that we have strong partnerships um, with some of our um, stakeholders um, in terms of that and sort of the um, referendum request and target communication areas there. So we put that under communication because that requires a specific targeted um, strategy different than normal communication. So if the district were not thinking of referendum, that obviously would not be a strategy in that specific year. So listed that out as a specific strategy, not isolated that's the only thing we're concentrating on, but it is a, a unique strategy that, that you wouldn't find if the district were not considering um, going to referendum. Um, under the goals six and seven, um, sorry, I clicked off on that too. have to do with um, fiscal planning, both the financial plan, um, if we soon get a state budget, um, deciding what that looks like, and then also integrating, continuing to integrate some of our business operational technology plans there. Um, I've listed some of the indicators of success there. Under the financial plan, continue to look at our facility study, what can handle under a regular operating budget, what's going to move forward to a referendum, how do we prioritize those, that's an ongoing um, piece when we look at our financial strategy. 
And then um, looking at our health insurance, I think um, we're going to hear a little bit about that, but really start to dig into that to look at where are we doing, what are the trends, what is the actuarial data saying from our insurance, and starting to look at that from a financial management planning. The integration of some of our systems is still a priority for us, um, both for efficiency and effectiveness. And there's a lot of systems that can be integrated, and you'll see some of those listed there in terms of how do we measure that. <coughs> So we have some different, you probably have heard these words before, some of our systems, Skyward or Infinite Campus, Climber, and they all have different chunks of data. How do we not have duplication of data? How can they share data? How can that be a much more um, electronic process instead of manual like some of those processes still are? Some of them have to do with human resources there. Um, we just finished up our online registration process for this school year, and so we want to review that with our parents, what worked, what did not work, what do we need to change for next year, what did you like about it, customer service, um, and those types of things. Um, getting all of our job descriptions online, and then making sure that we have a support staff compensation model that sort of mirrors our um, educators that we put together last year, so that you'll find there. The last two goals um, are under district culture and climate. And so some of the um, pieces refer to our talent ma management framework. Last year we introduced that, but really focused on the compensation part of that. But there is a lot of other in terms of retention, in terms of onboarding. There's a lot of pieces under HR that we need to work through, and that's for all employee groups. But we're going to continue to work through that model, um, having manuals in place. A lot of onboarding, I think, is a high priority with us this year. Um, so when staff come they feel like they're getting everything that they need right from the get-go instead of having to wait till they've been you know hired for a couple weeks and getting some information whatever that is if it's a login or you know, a form that they might need <laughs> um, and then the last one was sort of one that the board had mentioned and I think it's one that's probably not unique to our school district or any organization in measuring climate and culture and always trying to find that so there's some good information <coughs> about that and and really when you look at climate culture it talks about staff engagement those things go hand in hand um, it's not something that one person creates it's a collective sort of attitude about what am I contributing to it and do I feel like I can contribute to it so um, we'll start to look at that and the goal is by the end of the school year to have some benchmark data and a process that we can use annually to measure that and see where we're, our growth is and determine what it is that we want to measure that that's important to people and that they feel like they can contribute to or, or have, have some input into that process. So those goals, you'll see some of those were some continuation of items that started last year. Some of them, some of them are a little bit new, um, but all of them will provide us at the end of the school year what I would call metrics or benchmarks of data that when we move forward we'll be able to have a lot more, some data that's associated with some of those. And we can decide how much do we want to grow or improve or reduce Right now, we're just not at a place that has a lot of systems or structures or frameworks in place to just throw numbers out. Because I could throw numbers out, but I don't think that they're meaningful. We're just not quite there yet as a system. So. Thank you. Um, so the second part is facilities planning and draft survey review. No ratings for school perception. So we're going to bypass that for now, move on to the strategic planning and visioning. The next pages in the packet are just a summary of what we want to make available as we move forward into the, the um, facilities planning. We captured basically, I think the board had been getting updates all of last year and was pretty comprehensive. Lots of presentations, lots of meetings, lots of focus groups. So this seven page document just summarizes for the average citizen some of the things that we did last year to sort of create a vision for learning. So it's a summary document. <coughs> We will still have all of the presentations that were done last year surrounding this, the focus groups. If people want to go see all those, we will put them on our website in planning of it. But most people will want to say, well, what planning did you do? How do you engage the community last year? So they're just little snippets, paragraphs, pictures, very visual, that talk about the work, summarizes 16, 17, that we did around creating a vision for learning. So um, we're not planning, we will reference it in our newsletter and in the survey. We don't plan on hard copy printing that and mailing it because we're doing the wit in a window that's going to be um, mailed, but it will reference that and it'll be on our website in terms of that document. So it's just a summary document that sort of captures all of the things we did last year with that as we move forward really to um, talk about the facilities planning and, and how does planning for learning link to planning for facilities. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so then we'll move on to six discussion items, the Act 32 resolution. Okay. Uh, 
so what I want to get out of this conversation is really one of is a direction for the 25th or 26th, our, our, our uh, board meeting. 25th. Thank you. Um, and so that's why the, the <coughs> resolution that, that is forward here is, is a little broad, but uh, the detailed memo I hope gave you some background information as to kind of where we stand right now and, and what uh, some of our options are. Uh, for our upcoming levy in, uh, in October. So where we currently stand is back in, in May, uh, made the decision to, to use Act 32 uh, for uh, $600,000, some of that being from projects that we just delayed to July 1, and then others such as the domestic hot water heaters and adding more lighting, more LED lighting uh, to the high school. And the idea here was that uh, using this would uh, provide us um, with stability in the mill rate given some variables. Uh, those variables hinged on a few different things. If you recall from the memo, they hinged on um, student membership counts, which are coming at the end of this month. They hinged on property values being up 1.5%. Uh, they hinged on um, finishing with a balanced budget uh, amongst, amongst a few other variables. And so two of those variables depending on how you look at it, were not very favorable. Uh, property values in our district went up 0.48%, while the statewide average was 4%. Um, and so what that does is uh, you're not able to spread dollars out as much across your district, and so the mill rate rises because of that. Second, um, with having a huge swing in our health insurance, and, and really swinging us, in, in essence, to dipping into fund balance to cover uh, that swing. We spent more than what we uh, thought that we would be spending for 1617, and so what that does is that dropped our state aid estimates um, um, significantly. And so we tried to do some things um, to recategorize to make that drop less, but nonetheless, state aid is, is going to drop more than what we had assumed back in May when we first were going through this, this exercise. And so with that, right now where we stand is if we continue to, um, we, we have the $600,000 and we can levy for that. Currently what that does is that brings our mill rate estimates still, membership has to come in in, in late September, to $10.14. And so what that means is in the last board packet, if you look back to it on the 28th of, of August, I laid out kind of what dollar amounts that means for each of the municipal municipalities on a yearly basis. Um, Franklin, it would hit the most. It's our smallest portion of our tax base, but it hit them the most because their values went up 4%. The city of Greenfield went down negative 0.4%, so their tax increase is actually the least. And then in the, in the village, or here in the city of, uh, or the village of Hales Corners, uh, property values went up <coughs> like 0.2%, something like that. So um, very small increases in property value. And so Right now, with a $10.14 estimate, the question really is, do we want to dip into fund balance, in, into fund 41, right, to cover some of that Act 32 work, or do we just leave it at the $600,000 and we kind of see where things fall um, in, in October? So it's a matter of really kind of <coughs> deciding between an increase in the mill rate or maintaining um, a, a fund 41 fund balance um, moving, moving forward to, for that rainy day as we've talked about. Um, so not the nicest position to be in. Um, you can look at it a couple of one of two ways though. In the last two years, this district has done two, almost $2 million worth of work in talking with, with Bray Architects as we're going through referendums and figuring out dollars to cross out some of those projects was nice. Uh, when you're only covering 20 or 30 percent of the high school with LED lighting versus 100 uh, percent, that's significant dollars. When you're able to cross off domestic hot water heaters and doing some, some of those things that you're crossing out of potential referendum items, uh, that, that's nice to be able to do. So over the course of two years, to see your mill rate only rise 20 cents and yet take on $2 million of work and kind of knock that out, that's hard to complain about, um, I, I would think. And you'd see that on the back end with less dollars in a, in a referendum. So 
Um, at the same time, it, it was uh, an idea that we could maintain stability in the mill rate. And um, if property values would not have been at 0.48%, which we found out in mid-August, it would have been a little different story. But you've got the dollar amounts from August 28th uh, of what right now a current mill rate would look like. Uh, you're talking $20 and $30 on, on $100,000 of property. Um, and so it's the idea of how much do we want to dip into Fund 41 at this point, if at all, um, to, to mitigate uh, some of the mill rate. Uh, increase. So, uh, I guess I don't remember, but was our mill rate for 1617 994? Correct. Okay. So, uh, and I mean, I, I mean, to me, the question makes sense. Was this information in the public packet? The I know uh, the, the the memo that you sent. The us, memo was, was not in the available public at all. Okay. I just wondered. So we can that. get any number of information out as to kind of what we see going on, and and it'll certainly be at the annual meeting. Okay. Um, I, I just knew that it was a two-pager, and I thought, let's just get it out that way. Okay. But it'll be a, it, a lot of it will be at the annual meeting. My only concern is I, I spent a lot of years on, on that side of the desk, and my only sure. concern is we talk about stuff that's in front of us that they don't have. Yeah. And, you know, we're supposed to, um, well, we want interest in what we're doing, and we're supposed to be getting, you know, feedback from the constituents as to what they think of stuff. So it would just be nice if they had some of the same information. Um, but I, I appreciate what you're asking because, you know, the idea was that we would be able to cover <coughs> this $600,000 just <coughs> a, and keep the mill rate the same based on projected state stuff and everything else. And you're saying that didn't work out, and so you're just trying to be above board on it rather than appear like we're doing a bait and switch. You know, on the one hand, we promise you the mill rate won't go up, but, uh, but we'll get this $600,000 worth of stuff done, and now we're talking about raising the mill rate so we can pay for it, and, and I understand that the, the variables that you're that you're trying to best guess on just seem crazy to me. So I mean, I don't I don't know how. I'm glad you're, it's your job now. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I appreciate you bringing this forward in this in this fashion. I just would encourage you to, if we can somehow get the information out to everybody. What did our uh, fund 41? What was the balance on that? Um, say two or three years ago. Do you know? 897. Okay, so uh, it's already gone down. Um, uh, Two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. It'll be at it's at six fifteen right now. Uh, and right, so right now, if we stick to the original resolution and we pass it all on to the mill rate instead of uh, <coughs> tapping fund forty-one for it, it'll be five sixty-five. Correct. Which is two hundred uh, uh, three hundred uh, thirty-two or two hundred whatever I said three hundred thirty-two thousand yep. or something like that. Yes. That's that's. Uh, I mean, we're just bleeding that thing dry. Yeah, I'm very concerned about that. I mean, obviously, the purpose of having money in the bank account isn't to have money in the bank account, but it's to be able to handle what, so, we, what we need to. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not a fan of raising taxes, but I, I understand this is this is this is a tough one. You know, it it, it is a tough one, John. I, I think you know we we made a, a strategic call <coughs> to draw down Fund 41 in 1617. Um, with the idea that um, going to, to referendum and showing a large decrease in our general fund balance would have been a dangerous thing to, to do, um, and quite frankly to save state aid dollars, which ultimately keeps the mill rate lower than it, than it should be as well. So it was strategic, um, and, and it was in consultation with a couple different uh, people, including Robert W. Baird and others. Um, so. Um, at the same time, that fund is there for these specific projects, for, for projects that we're currently doing right now. Um, it's, it's nothing that, it's for buildings and grounds maintenance work, which, we, which this district is accomplishing. Um, and, and, and it's there for no other purpose. It can't be there for, for to use anywhere else. Um, and so, you know, part of it is this district has set up a fund uh, that, is, that is strong and that can be used in these situations that we currently are in the midst of, um, and it can be a story that, that drives to part of you know a, a referendum. Hey, we're planning, and we are we have set aside a million dollars, and we're dipping into that too. And and, and there's a story behind this. Um, so it, it is it is a tough one. I, I don't uh, I don't disagree. It's it's really what and, and, and you being in, in the community and being in the in the public. Um, 
you may have a better sense of me of what is palatable. Um, to give you a sense, in the last uh, four or five years, we've gone from a 1002 to a 1013 to a 1047, back to 10. 1013, 994. So we've all been in this range. We're not, we're not, the, the range is not going to be a 1014, is not beyond what's been seen here in this district. Um, just, just as some historical perspective there. Yeah. Do you have uh, just rough numbers what the potential tax increase would be if we, quit, if we increase the mill rate to, to accomplish this? Would that be in the hundred or two thousand? Yeah. So in the, in the last board um, packet, I have laid those out with home values. So it's, it's different for each of the three municipalities. Uh, on a $100,000 home in Franklin, it's going to be a $61 increase. In the city of Greenfield, for every $100,000, it's $16. And in the village of Hales Corners, it's $22 for the year on $100,000. So 16, 22, and then the Franklins hit the most because of their large increase in property valuation. What would you say Franklins was? 61 on $100,000 with their 4.1% <coughs> increase in property values. So we're talking about that amount to give us some more flexibility <coughs> keep the balance of the fund for the program? Correct. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've been on the board for five going on six years, and when I got on the board, it was at 1.2 million on 41. <coughs> and I really, you know, we uh, we had we had pride in that, but we weren't using it. And I really, I really believe that things got overlooked and pushed aside and not done, and because we. <coughs> We took pride in that. Uh, at least the finance committee meeting that I was always tied, uh, uh, going to that it was, you know, a pride. And I think some things are just coming to roost. Absolutely. Uh, I I don't feel comfortable spending it down. However, <coughs> it is there for a reason, and we're using it for good reason. Uh, I again don't want to raise taxes. However, uh, I think best scenario is and, and, and is to raise it to 1014, minimize <coughs> the uh, uh, lesser dollars from the state or from where we're getting from and, and minimize the uh, uh, hit to the fund 41. We've used it to our advantage, there's no doubt. And uh, so uh, that that's my, my take on it. One thing to John, yes, be open about everything we do. <coughs> However, we are elected to do the business for the people. So. No, I, I completely agree with you there, but it's hard for us to get feedback from our constituents if they don't if they don't have the, the, the information that we're working with. <coughs> I'm not saying we each need to go out and take a poll or anything like that, but if somebody felt strongly about something, they they're going to say something to us, but if they don't I even have the stuff, and, and I would want to hear it. But if they, because I'm not voting for me, I'm supposed to be voting for, you know, my constituents. But, but uh, I mean, if they don't have the information, they can't possibly form an opinion uh, and decide whether to share it or not. Uh, I agree uh, about the, the, I mean, it's nice to hear you say that the Fund 41, this is what it's there for. Um, Quinn, I didn't remember that it was at 1.2, but I knew it was close to a million dollars. So thanks for that. I do get concerned about spending things down to the point where we can't handle the, the next time uh, the uh, the staff area floods or something like that. You know, and we got to go in there with more work or something. On the other hand, um, uh, I do get concerned about you know if we raise it to ten fourteen, then where do we go next when things don't don't uh, turn out in our favor? I see the the sheet you're talking about here from the last packet. Thanks, uh, Mike. Um, I, I, I'm in favor of not raising if we don't have to, but life's a balance. I've been saying that for years. <coughs> um, maybe what we need to do is spend some Fund 41 and raise a little bit. I, I don't know if it, that's a middle-of-the-road solution. I know it's not trying to be wishy-washy, but it's trying to balance it out between using it for what it's there for, you know, the same token, making sure <coughs> something's there for, for the next rainy day that we flood or something. 
one other variable that's still out there is, as I said, uh, our student membership counts. And uh, we, we certainly have a higher head count right now than we did last year at this time. Uh, we don't know if that's open enrollment or resident yet. Um, and so if I have residents going up, the resident count going up in the next revenue limit formula to, it was at 2074, I have it right now at 2090, so an increase of 16. Um, the head count right now has increased by 42 students from last September. So if we would get something above 2093, that would start to tick that mill rate up just a little bit as well. We're not talking anything significant, um, but it would be pennies. And so hopefully by the 25th, even from that third Friday week, I can na nail down kind of a, 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 even a closer estimate of what that membership is. And we could even bring something that says, okay, is it 1010, is it 1012, what's the, what's the magical number, what would that mean for Fund 41 fund balance? Um, does anybody else have any take on, on, on this topic? I guess my, my question would be is that <coughs> I think that we need to think about if we um, don't use any money from Fund 41 and we pass that along to the taxpayers, is that going to negatively impact our chances of having a referendum pass? <coughs> I think that's so, here's, think about. here's, um, yeah, yes, yeah. So you're, we're asking for money, and then we're asking for more money. <coughs> more money, more I, money, I, more I would, money. Yeah, so I, I would make this argument that we are, on a, on a one-time basis, asking for more money because next year that 600000 falls off completely. And should we have a successful campaign, a successful referendum, the voters would be saying, tack that right back on plus <coughs> some. Um, and so it is a one time, the 600,000 is one time, and it falls off next year, and, and that mill rate will drop back down. Um, and then the voters will decide if, if a referendum pushes that back <coughs> up or not. Um, I don't know if that, if that makes sense. but so. I understand your your concern, and, and I would say, again, we part of part of, of <coughs> this was looking at what the um, citizens advisory committee had had brought forward too, which was to look at alternative ways in which to handle some of these projects, the 1.6 million at, at the high school, and and these this was one of the solutions was to use Act 32 to do that, and I would say over the course of two years, um, 20 cents um, increase. 2% is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, Nancy, we've talked about that because one is if you temporarily raise it, then the gap between wherever that might be in a referendum seems smaller versus if you keep it low. You know what I'm saying? Like it appears to the average, ta school finance is not, it, it's complicated. You see what I'm saying is that it, if it temporarily takes the first increment now, then it looks like it's a bigger gap when it goes to referendum versus trying to explain if it's at 994 to cover that drop because we've used Fund 41, and then it's going to seem like a dollar or a dollar fifty or whatever it is in terms of that. So there's, it depends upon like your perspective on it. It's like, are you taxing me now in increments, or am I going to get it all in one big thing? Sh you know, when the referendum, <coughs> when that should, when the referendum passes. Yeah. Yeah, but to Nancy's point, we raise it twenty cents now, and then we turn around and raise it another buck thirty or something like that if the referendum passes. Right, versus a buck fifty all at once, right? right? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't. There's not. It's not a sight of where the money's going because the taxpayers want us to take care of our, our facilities. So even though it's kind of a shell game which way you do <coughs> it, can't be a conversation we have in isolation. It's about taking care of our facilities and I think the taxpayers would want us to do that. Even if it means going up 10, 14 this year, I think that the message, part of the message as we heard was find, like you said already, find alternative ways but also take care of these things where we Project list is long enough <coughs> that the taxpayers would understand, understand that, especially when we go out to referendum. Uh, just to clarify, the two on this uh, memo here, this couple of the numbers are wrong, right? The use of Fund 41, I'm pretty sure, because your recommendation doesn't match what's on the thing. The, the use of Fund 41, 60, and the 150, I assume those are, 60 is supposed to be 175. I think it's just an Excel thing that went down. See, sorry, Kevin, I am not following where you are. Uh, on your memo that's in there, the chart you have. Mm. 
the chart to just you guys? Kevin, whatever's just to you guys, I'll take a look at that. And okay, I'll just ask, Sorry. Like, looking at the numbers and the, what you wrote in the recommendation, what's the, do you know offhand what's the single most we've ever had to use of Fund 41? Like, uh, now off the top of my hat, I've got a big old spreadsheet of where we've had it since 1996, mm -hmm. um, and so I can come back with that information. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to even think how high it's been, because it's been above 1.2 when I'm doing that. <coughs> Um, so, yeah. Because, I mean, depending on what our greatest hit has ever been and yeah. what, you know, the highest average thing we have, I think that would really make it. Is that where your recommendation came from as far as what to do? Because, I mean, that really would be the basis I, for what we need to really leave in there in case something Yeah. Happens. My my recommendation really came from the, <coughs> the, the, the piece on, on the property value and the, and the amount that the mill rate would go up from a property value yeah. standpoint. We have no control over that yeah. at all. Okay, and so whatever increase is associated with, with that, uh, th that's, hard, that's hard to control. Yeah. As far as where we, where we had our huge swing in health insurance, right, and that drove us into a deficit, while you could certainly argue we have no control over that as well, it was still going into a deficit. And so whatever we lost from that standpoint, I made the connection, why don't we, as a starting point, take those dollars out of Fund 41 to miti mitigate at least that portion of the mill rate increase, which is about seven cents. I would, I mean, I'd like to go back and look and see what we've, okay. what's our biggest use has, or use has been, and try to see if that's something that could potentially happen again, just so we have enough money in there to cover our bases. With sure. It. And then from there, I mean, we're talking about using the money and they want us to do all these things. We have money. Why don't we use it? They're going to say, well, you want more money now. Why aren't you using the money you already have? That's something. That's my concern with this. We have the money, and we can still have a bit of a safety net in there. Why not go for it? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say one of, one of Todd and I's major concerns, and, and maybe some just, there, there is quite a bit of deferred maintenance on, on the roofing side in this district. Um, a lot of on the what? roofing. Okay. A lot of 1969 sections. <laughs> Across half the high school roofing is original. Have you, <laughs> have you considered the other schools? Because we spent, it seems like in the past several, several years, we spent an awful lot of money on the high school. What about, what about the roofing and the other schools and that kind of stuff? What kind of shape is it in? What year is it put up? So eight, uh, eight to ten years newer on at least some portions of this than the other. I just want to make sure that we're not just staying focused on spending money on the high school. We've got other facilities out there, but I just keep hearing stuff about the high school, whether it's lighting or maybe roofing or something like that. We need to make sure that we've got other facilities out there that we're equally spending money on uh, where it, based on need. And to Kevin's point, I'd like to know the largest unplanned sure. expense. Yeah, unplanned. That, that's, that's the focus right there, is what is, was unplanned. Okay, so, so I have some direction to go to. I, I didn't want to put a number on the proposal, just, just to throw a number out that wasn't going to be. But, but I can um, come back with that information in a proposal with a number as a starting discussion. Again, for next, is that appropriate? <coughs> another, dis I don't know, another discussion? Sure. To, to bring a number forward on the 25th? Uh, that, that because that would mean that we would be voting on a new resolution for Act 32, right? That's ultimately what we're deciding on is instead of having a resolution that said 600,000, it would say 550 or 525 or 5. And the, the balance to come out of? Fund 41 then. Unless, unless, unless something would happen where we have an, you know, th there's always variables throughout the year. If there's an amazing health insurance year, hey, let's go to the years. And we don't have to touch Fund 41, then great. 
um, but, but we want to have that in the budget should should it need to be. Does that make sense? Does that make What's your timeline of needing a, an action on that? Prior to October 1. So Under current law. We've got a, a, a meeting scheduled for next week. <coughs> Would you, do you want to discuss it at that point? I can cover it. Sure. I mean, we can cover it then and then be set to potentially pull that in. Okay. Okay. That would be good. Okay. I have one more question then on 41. And, and make sure the public can yeah. get that on the public packet, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question on form 41. Mm -hmm. Like anything else, it started out at zero. It got up to 1.2 or more. Um, how did it get up and how do we do it again? Yep. So. Um, Otherwise, it's just uh, planned obsolescence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. So. This is a fund that you can only levy into at the <coughs> annual meeting, um, and, and that's the only time you can put money into it. So we actually, our, the, the plan on, uh, on, on the 26th is to actually levy some dollars into Fund 41 because we have projects right now that fall under the general operations that we can handle uh, and, and to use Fund 41 is advantageous. So it, it could have been that there were years in which um, uh, this district just said we, we, we see that we have a, a good fortune, that we have more revenue than we currently have expenditures. Let's put some, some of that into Fund 41 and not spend it. Or it could have been budgeted in Fund 41 to spend, and it might have been a good year, greater revenues or lesser expenditures, and we just didn't have to actually draw it out of Fund 41. They just let it sit there and roll over to the next year. So there can be some strategic pieces to this in future years if we have good good years, um, we can put money into it at the annual meeting. So you're saying if we have an exceptionally good year with health insurance claims and that kind of stuff, we cannot take the excess that we had budgeted for health insurance that we didn't have to spend and roll it into Fund 41? What you could we do... We take out a Fund 41 to pay for health insurance. No. No, 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 no. So in this instance, what we did was, because health insurance was such a huge swing and gave us a deficit spending, there was projects that we did during 1617 that were eligible to be used for Fund 41. Okay. Right. So that's how we. That's how we. For those Fund 41, you freed up other money to. Correct. Pay for Correct. So that's that's how we how we made that. Yeah. Well, that seems awfully full limitations that you can't just. Well, you know, the idea. Two thousand less than we budgeted on health insurance. Yeah. So we're going to pop that in 41 so that we can plan on a couple years of doing a roof at. Or something, you know. The idea is to have DPI sets up these funds so that it's not just all this general fund balance that the public doesn't know what you're doing with, right? Fund 41 is set up so that the public says, those are extra dollars that Whitnell has, and we know that they're only going to use it on maintenance of, of the district. This district also, we have Fund 46, okay? And, and that's, a, that's also something that goes towards, gen, toward, towards maintenance and site improvements but it can't be spent for another four years. Yeah, that's a however, low, low, low amount too, right? it's a very low amount, it's hundred dollars. So if you however, yeah. however, if you have a good year in which there's a sur surplus at the end, money can now go in fund forty six to show the public, hey, we had a good year, we're gonna put that over here for our rainy day <coughs> maintenance fund as well. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so you'll bring that back yeah. next week.
And uh, I was in another district all day today in Ford, and the Ford meeting was just having a lot of contact with us. And then the idea is if, if we know that, that's kind of one line, which we have to intersect with the tax dollars. You know, so that if we can find out from the survey how much money will you provide us, and what are your priorities to consider. Just wonder if you could pull the screen and the projector, or is that not needed? Well, I mean, you can pull it on here. I know that's up to you. Just, this is for that and the beginning of the year. Do you have a question? Here. Oh, here. I've got it. I've got it. I'm the driver. We can scroll through together. So that's, that's the idea. Is we, again, two things. One is what are people's priorities, and then what is their tax tolerance, if any. And then from there, we can design what the project is. So the uh, system is get um, laid out and printed. It's designed right now to be an eight-page survey of 211 by 17 sheets of paper. Um, so there's really eight panels to work with. They'll get mailed flat. So this is the opening letter. People will see this. That's important. And the back mailing plan. So it'll be a plan. It'll be a staple. And it'll have a business reply and the world search side. So the opening letter is written by Lisa. And uh, uh, so I'm we've got feedback from people from Lisa. I think it's really a great letter. Um, and it really explains kind of, um, it, it rolls it into a little bit more, it's not just about facilities, it's really about planning and starting out with what we're doing from an academic standpoint. And then transitions into really the idea that part of our planning has to do with facilities. And then probably the most important paragraph is the date, the cost to address all the projects that that in, and then from a messaging standpoint, realize doing all this at one time is not feasible, and the projects need to be prioritized. Therefore, our goal is to develop a plan, upgrade the school in phases based on community priorities and willingness to financially support the plan. Defining the scope and timing of the first phase of this plan is the goal of survey. So that's what we're up to. Call to action to take the survey in two ways. Again, people will be able to take it electronically. There will be a November 6th, we have a meeting, a special meeting. Yeah, so we, when we were talking, Phil, so the dates are, these are all negotiable right now. So one of the challenges is if we're ready to go, we could expedite it and increase. So we have a board meeting on October 23rd. But because there's five Mondays <coughs> in October, then we don't have a meeting on the 30th or the 6th. There's one on the 13th. We're getting nervous the later we do because it may take us more than one meeting to go through the results and make dates are, we have October 23rd and November 6th in there, but there isn't a scheduled meeting right there, depending upon, you know, I'm guessing there will be some conversation. Absolutely. Um, that we may, and we may have public there, and I don't know what that looks like. So we can back those dates up if we want oh, to come back. No, we don't have one. You're right. They just have a five Monday October situation there, so it's like a three week gap in there. It just wasn't the normal second and fourth. <laughs> it's not going well. <laughs> Checks in the mail, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the uh, opening letter. And again, timeline is really is somewhat dependent on when we get the finalized. And then it, basically the timeline is once finalized, about two weeks to print mail. And then we like to keep the survey open for over two weeks, three weekends. And then about two weeks to do uh, get all the data entered and trade All right. So on the second page, First staff is responding information very straightforward. You want to be able to say the data by age, by municipality, um, see if they're an employee, employee, if they're a parent, and by the way, if they're no and no, um, they're not a parent, non uh, employee, then they fall into that most important non parent, non staff group for us, which is really 75% of the community. <coughs> they're going to again dictate what happens here. The, uh, we get into the background information. Hold on. Why, why 
Why do we need to know their age? Um, we want to make sure our seniors are well represented in the data because it's easy to reach out, obviously get staff, get parent input. We want to be sure our seniors are well represented. That's why we care about that. The other thing is we know seniors tend to vote more than the younger people. So if they don't fill out the survey, what do we, we can't do nothing about it? No, we, we don't, but we'll have that footnote on there saying our seniors were underrepresented. Ninety-eight percent of the surveys we do, the seniors are actually overrepresented. Um, the other thing you can do is you can say, oh, our seniors like to get news. So you, you have enough data so you can disaggregate the data and say for our people who are 65 and older, they like to have lip drops. They like whatever they want. Okay. And these are just going to be mailed to people in the district, correct? So then do we need to have on here do not live in the district? We do. Um, for, well, there's, you hope that you mail it in the district and you do both mail as possible if it's outside. The other scenario you have is we will ask all staff that take the survey, even if they don't live in the district. Okay. So, and they, but we will remove the non-residents from the financial support plan. Okay. But you could get a split family that person, one of them, one of the parents doesn't live in the district, one does. Open enrollment? Are they getting surveyed? They may not live in the district. They, they, well, they, you can also provide them with a survey. Typically we do. And then we remove their data from the financial okay. support plan. Okay. But then you have the choice whether or not you remove it. The next section really talks about background information. Specifically, we think of this in terms of what are the needs. I wondered if our opening line shouldn't be like what you have on the last. Because <laughs> when I read it, read the background information, I thought it should say up front that we, you know, based on a condition, a facility condition re report first, that that report was done, and then based on that report, we then did, we're able to address our most yeah, pressing. Because yeah. we had a long range plan too. I mean, Maybe that. You move that to the end of it. Yeah. This little paragraph that moves all around the survey. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, the background is we, we've got this long list of projects. <laughs> and then based on that long list, we have now taken care of a number of them using energy efficiency. I thought that term was confusing too. People are not going to know what the heck our energy efficiency exemptions are. So I don't know if there's another way of just saying using uh, a different word. I don't know. That sounds pretty complicated. Maybe we have to use that, but. Even if you took the word exemption out of there, energy efficiency funding, possibly that just simplifies it for people. That's my thought. Or you could just call it, you know, special energy efficient funding. Yeah. Or something. The like word that. special. I don't was, know. It was well because that's that's what it was. Uh, it's a special yeah. act that applies to just this, and rather than get too technical about it, you just call it special. Anyway, that was my suggestion. <coughs> paragraph. That word exemption, is that spelled correctly? No, it's got a C in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like that better.
you might add our, our classrooms and building or our build it's not just the classrooms that are not designed it's other spaces as well our classrooms and hallway I don't know We don't. We do do learning in buildings, though, in hallways. <laughs> Not that you. I don't. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. As a result, or that's fine. If you want to just leave a question. Okay. Yeah, I think somebody had asked the question. Why do you ask this question at the end? Why is that there? And let me explain. There's two reasons. One is, um, first of all, um, it makes a good headline. If we can say 70% of, of the respondents. That question? Does it unlock the rest of the survey if it's electronic or is the whole thing still available? Whole thing's still available. Mm. Uh, uh, I don't I think it's relevant. Yeah. I do have I'm struggling with it, but I'm <laughs> Should we clarify exploring a facility a, a one time? It's not a reoccurring, and maybe the public have been hearing about these reoccurring. This is a capital restaurant, not an operation restaurant. Okay, but will they know that? Well, in fact, this really is what we are positioning as the first phase of a long term. Possible, restaurant. but not reoccurring, meaning well, every year. Be reoccurring. Right, I know that, but I just <coughs> wondered. She's trying to, she's trying to see if we should point out the stuff that, yes, we know, but that other people might not know. Okay. <clears throat> just, just because we know it doesn't mean it's not actually, worth pointing out. Actually, what I was really thinking is that maybe the public has heard about reoccurring. But if you are no. comfortable that that is not. I think they will open another case. Okay. I get that. That's fine. That <clears throat> yeah, I was actually more thinking yeah, the so, public. So I have just a, a, a basic concern on. I guess on this to this point and and that is and I think I've mentioned this before I'm sure I have um, that uh, it makes it this makes it sound like we haven't been taking care of our stuff and in fact we started this whole process several years ago with wanting to um, to uh, build new or add on to HCE and maybe do something about rebuilding the high school pool because you know and the way I look at it taxpayer board member whatever the way I look at it is you need to be able to pay to repaint your house if you need more. If you need to repaint it, right, Quinn? You got to repaint it. You got to, but but you shouldn't necessarily have to borrow money for it. What you have to borrow money for maybe is to like put on an addition or you know build new or something like that. So you know people. I mean, to me, this looks like we haven't been taking care of our stuff, and now we need to to get a major cash injection from the public to be able to do it. Just a minute. But, I don't agree. I want to tag on when but, you're done. Okay, but but um, 
where we started wasn't in trying to basically get money from folks to pay for our ten year plan all at once but was to the, the major the, you know get a major injection of, of, of <coughs> cash to to do the major building stuff you know add on to HCE maybe and 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 rebuild the pool and so my concern is and, and to that effect we were asking half of what uh, to do those things half of what this 40 like you say 44 and, a half, and I'm not gonna ask 44 and a half but and I know that's just to make a point but do you see what I'm talking about this seems to have migrated away from where we started this to begin with and I'm not exactly in favor of asking folks for money to do stuff that we had a 10-year plan to do can I ask you <clears throat> Question, John. Okay. If you the last sentence here, because I thought that in a way <coughs> that sentence, if the public chooses to address these needs, <coughs> wasn't strong enough on saying large scale capital needs, and maybe that would address your concern because what we don't want it to sound like is we're uh, we're addressing routine maintenance. So it doesn't. Maybe it does say large scale capital. Yeah, I think there's a, there's Where a do you want that? Okay. That would help, right? That's what I would like to see in here. I don't agree that well, we're making it fluffy. As soon as you, can you, do you think that we, I mean, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. I think that as soon as you put on a new roof, <coughs> the, the next day it's a day old, and the day after that it's two days old. So from the very beginning it starts to degrade, just like that from birth you start to age, okay? So I think these things have been aging, and again, I'll go with the boiler thing. Just because it may be 60 years old with a on-paper life expectancy of 25, you know, have a, a boiler person go in there and tell you that it's that it's past its prime, I think it'd be a challenge to find. So just because the calendar says this thing's 40 years outdated doesn't mean that it's that it's not perfectly good. It all depends on how well people maintain stuff. You know, there's a difference between a, a car in Arizona <coughs> and a car in, in – uh, in Wisconsin, that's that's 20 years old. You know, that's why the air, the the military and airlines parks airplanes in the in the desert. So, uh, in other words, you can take care of stuff, or you can not take care of stuff. And in many aspects, we have been taking care of stuff. But that doesn't mean things uh, some things don't age uh, for the worse. And that's why we had a 10-year plan to do things like whether it's paint or roof or whatever. And so, my my concern is still the same. I think we're uh, we're giving the impression that we haven't been taking care of stuff, even though we have, but things still age. <coughs> and uh, um, it's, uh, I think we're, we've migrated into asking uh, for money for something that, at least at the beginning, that's not where this started. All right. Let me ask this question. Does the board, does the majority of the board agree that some money from the rough running could be used to replace major building systems that haven't saved the use of life? Are you comfortable with that? Or if you're not, then you can go with the school system. Is this anything near what the community um, group talked about? Understand your point. I, I disagree. How is this structure though <coughs> to bring back data to be able to ultimately provide direction on our approach? It's okay to say this is what we believe is the highest priority based on our feedback. And that may mean pulling out certain projects that you are planning for in a ten year moving forward capital improvement plan that aren't our current projects. That's okay to do. We just have to be sure that there's any duplication with proposed renovations or additions that we're planning appropriately. 
still be in a position moving forward to make the decision. I think I can add some language here that I think helps. Okay, and you're okay with teaching the question? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then the idea is to go to each school. Again, this is master planning. So there is an evaluation by the grade team of each school to identify the needs or issues, I guess we're calling them. Grove Corner arguably has maybe the most. It has the most bullets, but it is a little bit older. So we've got different levels and things this fall and existing library accessibility and persistent traffic problems with drop-off points and queuing systems. And we have the children's center layout and the library data about how many students are going to be able to access. So then what we did was we came up with an image. And the image has some numbers. The numbers correspond to the items. We're asking people to do a prioritization exercise. Less priority sites in the following. We created a little response rubric. The high, medium, or low. Less in the first grade is important, but our teacher phase is not a priority. So again, this team is planning. And the first one is demolition of the existing 1948-1962 school. I'm sorry, two school building sections and replace with new construction. So I think we're kind of missing that replace with new construction. So we added that today. And then enhanced security. The renovation of our classrooms. We locate enhanced kindergarten classrooms. We locate an active gym. We locate an exit cafeteria and kitchen. We create a dedicated visitor parking and relocate the playground. And then update the latest systems, which is the bundle of security technology, wiring, and so on and so forth. So that's the idea. And the plan here would be when I come back in whenever it is, November, we'd be able to use these items to scale and say, here's a prioritized list based on what the survey said. And we'd be able to compare the renovation of classrooms A to B with security at the middle school. So that's the idea. Comments, feedback around A to B? So I do have a real hard time following the first slide because it's more complicated than middle school. So for number one, my question is, those two items that are marked as number one, those are being demolished and the question is to demolish those two sections and replace those two sections as is? No, as in replacing new construction. But in the same place? No. So the reason I ask, so in this one, which is not the hard thing, it's color-coded, so it's us, right? Yeah, so on the online one, that will be a colored image? But it won't be in the hard copy? It will be color on both. Okay, good. So that might help Nancy in terms of visually identifying the color there. It didn't. Because you're saying demolish and replace, and they're both number one. Yeah. Well, those are there now. It's confusing. And they will be removed. Where's the new part is what I didn't get from the picture. Are those the parts you're demolishing, or are those the parts you're building? No, it's the yellow. You should see the key underneath the plan that shows it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You could also just put across there, new construction on the yellow, you know. I just like a current picture. That would get confusing to me. Or use multiple images. That's what I'm talking about is throw, just throw the text, new construction on top of the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And 
made the arrows go into that hashed in area saying demolished portion or something. It's a possibility. Uh, just a, another idea. It doesn't have to. <coughs> Oh, they're talking about, you know, 40 amps versus building current. You know. I do have a question though. If do all of these address ADA? If someone, how do you highlight? If they say no, I don't want the cafeteria done, then they're not. Yeah, how do you that. get into that? You know, anything that's built new is going to be ADA compliant. Right. So I guess the question is, is there any remaining non-compliant issues? The intent would be no. So the budget as it's shown right now has dollars in it to accommodate. If they go all eight of these though. <laughs> well, we need to change that. I know. I wonder if there's a way to simply say that they're not accessible. I know. Not a separate question, but I think I think people think we should be in compliance, and sure. it helps to solve the referendum. I don't know if there's. It's, it's, that's a, it's kind of like you're going to build a quality building. Yeah, yep. but but she's she's but right. But I'm saying if they don't, <coughs> you're right. Speak if they don't understand <coughs> that they need all of these to make it accessible. If they don't, but we could put a little put that to say all. In addition to energy efficiency issues, too, right? Windows, you know, there's. But, but that's I don't want to get too detailed here, but. But that's not really as um, limiting can factor. I, can I say? Something. I don't, I, I mean, don't want to totally highlight ADA. But the other issue I looked at here were some of the energy efficiency. <coughs> I know. Or at the bottom, or whatever. Okay. Well, um. Because otherwise, they could probably put out. Otherwise, they would come to shut out your background and renovation and your own space. You have a little space right under your 17.2 million. It's got a natural mode. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just think HCE or is worse. Or where you mentioned in terms the of accessibility, not the other buildings are. Right, that this one is more challenging. So, uh, or that first paragraph where you mentioned it's more expensive to heat and maintain. You could also work in the, the um, you know, <coughs> we also there, there are also serious ADA compliance issues, and granted, you kind of readdress that in a bullet, but I mean, in the first bullet, but you, you really don't want to have stuff. Um, I've, 
first bullet where it says handicap. creating accessibility challenges for handicapped students at community members. Doesn't that hit? It doesn't show that these are that you, that these are solutions down here. If in other words, oh I might want to enhance not enhance the gym, but it doesn't say that's not gonna address the ADA issue there or something. I think we can cover I mean, it's, it's also okay. easy enough to say the older sections of the school are more expensive to heat and maintain and create serious ADA or, or create significant ADA issues or something like that. I mean, that's just a thought. So the library was redone in like 2001, and it used to have natural light. What is the need for natural light, light now? So back in 2001, it was where the fourth grade classrooms are now. I think it was actually larger at the point. They moved it to a current location. And if we're addressing it in Edgerton as far as not having natural light, among other things, shouldn't we also be addressing it at the middle school, if that is the case? Because the middle school is in a similar kind of location. think so. I mean, I don't know what the natural light really has to do with any of that. I think it taps into more of the goal of creating a high-quality educational environment for Swanson. I think it's going to be our design recommendation for the natural light is not as many of the educational spaces as possible. So we might do that. And maybe it's a little bit bigger. Which is, I don't know how much. Might do that way. What would you put it in other than drill? Like, you need to put some skylights in or something? Or? Doesn't that create additional roofing issues down the road? Uh, addressing some of them, hopefully the project does it. I don't know that it creates additional roofing issues. I can kind of look at skylights as <coughs> flat roofs, eventually they all leak. Yeah, and it doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be flat skylights that you can put no. on the house. Uh, there's clear story options and transit options and lots of things that you can do there. And it all costs money. But I guess with that too, it sounds like we just need furnishings. What major renovations are there going to be other than maybe adding what other wall dividers? Because I don't think there's any major walls that would have to be coming down in there. No, so I think it's finishes, it's furnishings, it's looking at um, uh, right now there's a computer lab, mm -hmm. but it's continually less new. So we're looking to turn that into maybe a major space with you know, tinker lab, something like that. And so again, without getting into a high level of detail, I'm trying to yeah. describe that. somewhere they don't I don't is that in one of these solutions <coughs> the multi-purpose stage uh, I didn't see it offered as a dedicated then maybe we or should gym. look that absolutely because then you're the multi you're you're creating and renovating the staging area which would then <coughs> tell me that you're updating it for ADA without having to put the words in there you're updating the restrooms in multi If that's, if that's part of, I'm sorry, part of number three. Could you create a separate? You might want a separate board. A separate board for the restrooms. Okay. <coughs> I think building it would be, you can't, it's not doing something separate, right? It's, I mean, we're addressing it one by having a dedicated building to do that. <coughs> Renovating the existing gym and become a dedicated cafeteria. That's really part of the, <coughs> the restaurant association. 
Oh, are they or aren't they? Because I know I've been in that building and there were some ADA issues for the bathroom. That, that are <coughs> challenges to you, correct? Uh, the uh, bath bullet point number, the last bullet point sites uh, needing to address restrooms and multi purpose. Okay, so the question so I you can't was, so where does that correlate with a bullet point on the bot or a question on the bot? That'd be great. If you could just clar clarify that somewhere in here, that's all I need. The multi-purpose stage is you can't access. You can only access by steps, and it also is very small. Um, and I would just add that um, just having had a um, all of the students in the gym now that we're about 470 uh, students, um, it's really hard to even get all of the all of the kids inside the gym. It is it is a very small. Um, it's the smallest gym in in the district. So um, I know you identified that as a point for HCE about having a small gym. <coughs> this one's even smaller. So, I'm so maybe maybe the word isn't just a dedicated gym, but an adequate gym. It's not just that you know we don't have an adequate size. A dedicated gym that meets. The needs of the student population there. We don't have one. Chris, unlike HCE, you're uh, you don't have a, a separate gym and cafeteria capability, do you? The uh, multi-purpose room is in the basement, so we do have a multi-purpose room um, that we do access and utilize. Uh, it is very limiting as far as what can be done. It has a very low ceiling. So um, it really requires, I mean, what you can do there is basically floor activity. That's, that's essentially your version of a small gym, right, that HCE has. However, HCE is able to use their small gym as a ca the cafeteria, therefore leaving a large gym available all the time. You don't have that ability, right? Correct. Okay. So the first bullet, I think, <coughs> I think the first bullet does cover that. It, the bullet um, for HCEs that I thought was true as well is the gym is too small to meet the needs of physical education and for large group presentations. just giving feedback that I don't think that's clear enough. I don't. I, I agree. A dedicated gym. It's not just that. It's also dedicated and large enough. That's all. Okay, yeah. So the I get the, the space thing, right? So dedicated is one thing. In the space size thing, I just want to make sure we don't like add every crawl of the space on up yeah. above and kind of go. <coughs> yeah. I get that. I also think it's got to be clear where this <laughs> these issues are. Well, okay. So I'm just thinking, I mean, the major, the biggest issue is that you just, it's not dedicated to it. You have cafeteria, you've got to yeah. go through the multiple lunches, pick up, sit down, that takes away the gym classes, whereas HD doesn't necessarily have an issue like that. The size of it, yeah, that's a problem, don't get me wrong, but the bigger problem is that it's not dedicated to what it's used for. A good portion of the day is taken away from being able to have the activities or whatever else might be in there or some 
class need to use it for open space, they can't use it. Okay. Uh, I think I got it. Hey, what is, uh, this is just kind of irrelevant, but maybe not. What's going to go in that little courtyard if that number one were to actually happen? Rainwater. That, like, really odd L-shaped courtyard that's in there? Yeah, green space. Okay. Is it... Is it significantly, is it any significant size to be able to use for anything, or should they just <coughs> close it up? So to keep the natural light coming in. So you just need to, yeah, exactly. So just, to, uh, just need to make sure that it's, it's sufficiently, si sufficiently sized that they can do something with it other than just, you know, let the rainwater feed the weeds, you know. Exactly, education spaces. I mean, existing career and technology tech ed spaces. <laughs> facilities. <coughs> spaces, facilities, classrooms. It's going down. But Visitors, and yeah, something. All visitors. I like patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I agree. <laughs> It does, doesn't it? I think the word visitors gets at the public a little bit more, even though it does include. But it won't, yeah. it won't encompass everybody. Okay, yeah. That's perfect. If that, if that helps. Well known by 
by people that I guess have been in there. I think a bunch of the community probably hasn't been in there because of the. Yep, it was. Do you want to add a new visit? Mm hmm. We get, we get a lot of yeah. We get a lot of complaints about that. That would be. I don't know. I think there. I think there would be value to adding the, the question, because it's a significant expenditure for one focused thing, yeah. and the rest of it is not a focused thing. It's it's this stuff in general throughout the facility, for number two, but the gym is a focused uh, space and a focused expenditure. I think it needs to be a separate question. Yeah, but there's there's other bullet points on here. They're less than one hundred and fifty thousand, aren't there? So I, I don't know that it comes down to the the cost of the of the uh, of the bucket number versus the focus of the bucket number. I mean, arguably there is a cut point where you don't go below it. <coughs> That's okay. there, the question is that that's a whole different deal. But the concern is that's right. I'm in favor of a separate question for the gym because I, I think it's easy enough, well, well enough defined and focused, uh, and as as Quinn said, um, well enough known issue that we can find out if it really is for the community as a whole or not. It's kind of interesting. <coughs> I have a question too again about the ADA. Can you, this would be another one where, you know, a star might renovate, expand the <coughs> cafeteria. That number three might include an ADA upgrade and maybe number five doesn't. I don't know how, but then could you put little stars? These include the ADA compliance issue. I just think that helps. Yep. Would be the same kind of anything yep. renovated or new. Or maybe that. make, and even though we assume it, maybe make a bullet point here yeah. that, or an uh, asterisk, just to highlight that. Doing it at Tails Corner and Edgerton. Oh, I wondered that if we could make a connect a stronger connection. Yeah. And definitely pull the pool up ahead of the financial. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to gonna say that too. Yeah, I was <laughs> just going to say that. Yeah. Well, that should flow better. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get there in a second. Okay. Um, are you okay with high school? Okay. <coughs> we're going to go back to the conversation. Going to an ongoing data point, um, high school actually had a much bigger program. Okay. So we need to be okay.
and, and there I added to it, yes, but what I did was I added something that I, I think has been a community issue, at least comes up every year as a, a pretty good community issue, yet some of these other things on here to go to, to my point before is are not, have not been community issues and were going to be handled in the 10 year plan. So it goes back to my thing of asking, you know, the questions for asking for money for stuff that we could handle otherwise, but major chunks of things, um, which was where this all started, uh, <coughs> weren't accounted for so well, so much. And you talked about, um, you know, if you ask the question, you're going to have data that may or may not go the way you'd hoped. Well, you know, maybe some of these bullets need to be out of the high school if, if uh, we can take care of things without, uh, in, in a 10-year plan without having to ask for money for them. say option one doesn't even do anything worth even no. having on there because nope. people are going to say well we just repair it repair it but doing the things on there isn't going to fix the issues at hand that are listed above and two years ago replacing the pool was 4.6 <coughs> million yes. that included the locker rooms though that included the locker rooms right locker rooms and pool 4.6 <coughs> million which is and obviously seating areas 3.2 less than it included expanding some just redoing it and expanding some on the deck, yeah. yeah. Putting the some deck. in on the deck. And then putting, and then putting uh, up, renovating where there's, do you know the layout up there now? So the solid glass uh, yeah. panes, um, putting new, new expanding bleachers up there versus the ones that don't work anymore that are up there and replacing those solid glass panes with glass overhead doors so you can open the viewing area up to the space temporarily and then close it back up for ventilation and moisture control. Four point six million. Comparability of that, I mean, we have to assume that we have to take a look out at the walls now, and you know, when you say it, it's usually, and I, I don't have this with me right now, but it's not just the depth, but it's also the height clearance you know, from the diving board mm -hmm. the structure. And, and I, it's, I guarantee I think back to the we have to raise that as well. Yeah, I never heard of the height of the height thing as a as an issue. Yeah. I knew the tapered sides of the dive well were an issue and the depth of the dive well were the issue, yeah. Yeah. as well as in the lanes, the depth of the lanes not allowing diving off the, uh, off the side, let alone starting blocks. So, and as far as the thing goes, we do have a meet, don't we? We just... Um, it's not, the only purpose of having a meet is so you can have a training night. Right. It serves no purpose otherwise. But do we, is it like a scrimmage thing or do we have an, uh, another school come in? I another school in comes in, but they, it's more or less... I don't know how else to describe it other than you have it so you can stop in the middle and recognize the parents. Okay. The it counts, but it's, it counts, it's more of an exhibition is what you're saying. More or less because mm -hmm. the times don't factor in. No, they're not. Would have it's apples and um, But with when you're talking about the starting blocks, um, I don't know if the, the first sentence in general, um, <clears throat> not a big fan of, but one part of it specifically would be the lack of starting blocks needed. We had starting blocks. It's the fact that even if we did have them, we couldn't use them anyway. Um, it almost sounds like you, if we just had the blocks, we would have it for competition. We just take them out and say, I don't know, six lanes. But, but I don't know if the six versus eight lanes have any significance to the average voter either. I mean, we know what those kind of specifics uh, cause a problem for, but...
Send them to Greenfield or something? Is that what you're thinking? Send them somewhere else? No swim program. Well, you know, when the football field was half flooded all the time, it would have been easier just to close those gates too, you know, and six and a half million dollars cheaper. So Yeah, so rebuild, I think one option ought to be rebuild where it is, and one option ought to be a natatorium, and I guess another option is to do nothing or something, I don't know. But, but the, uh, I, I do think that building, rebuilding where it is, I, I think you need to look at the, at the, there was a lot of work done, a lot of planning done, and a lot of pricing and all this other kind of stuff done to come up with a solid $4.6 million estimate. I know it was two years ago, but that shouldn't have gone up by, you know, 75%. So if you could please not reinvent the, I don't know if you've reinvented the wheel some or, or exactly what, but if you could please look at the old wheel and figure out what they've done and if it can be brought in anywhere near 4.6 or $5 million, because I don't understand the 7.8. I just don't. Well, I just ask that you guys well, look back at the problem. stuff and but figure out everything. there's there's a way that they I mean it, it's not like you know we were missing like it did it didn't include the ability to hold it did it 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 was it was not something I think so I, I don't remember but it was not something that is like oh you wanted it to be able to hold water well that's another three million you know it wasn't anything like that it was. <coughs> Shouldn't we talk as a board yeah. or is this a. Yeah. The part that that would impact that we yeah. haven't talked about here is if you build a natatorium over there, or that can't, I don't know how it can be in the high school by end curriculum. Right. I don't know. You, you, yeah. So we. It's a standalone thing. I don't know. You can't have a high school. I mean, you can't go out. Yeah. We may have to address that community concern, <coughs> that community group concern by saying after, I mean, Further evaluation, it was a non-viable option because of impact to the middle school phys ed, and I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to just write something to blow it off. No, I don't I'm think not, we ought to. But, I mean, I, I think that <coughs> but there are a lot of things. So, out there, you have to know. A lot of concern. There's a lot okay. of variables that could have a lot of cost. <coughs> that we have to that out if we wanted to attach dollar signs to it as another option on here. That's why I was curious, Tim. You said that the advisory committee. They yeah. did bring that. They as recommended that. They had a whole, if I must say, they had like a design and something on there as well. 
<coughs> and they did come to us with a dollar amount. I'm trying to find it in our, <coughs> I don't know if it's in our board packets or where it was. I do recall, I don't know if it was at the time, but I also do recall us, the board, just changing the mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, they, you know, I they did. That. Yeah, it's an option. Is it a viable one? If I can interject that the, the, um, the <coughs> when we, because uh, I was a part of the, the team, the advisory committee, they didn't have actual designs, but um, they had a number of people on the team who were engineers or in the field um, themselves, and they kind of did some general looking at space over at the middle school, looking at some space over here at the high school, and felt like the middle school was the best option for, the, for a nanatorium. Yes. But they didn't have an actual company come to any designs or anything like that. It was all their own work. We do have um, designs, <coughs> though, uh, proposed designs on rebuilding it where it is to code. And that's where they came up with a 4.6. So, so, let me, let me just, so, so the survey, if we ever have survey questions, the, there's a couple ways to do this, but I threw out this idea because I'm not sure it was the best way. Another way to do this is, is it sounds like um, to, to test the, the recommended plan. So the recommended plan is <coughs> whatever, rebuild at the current location with eight lanes of siding and blah, 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 blah. Before we answer that, <coughs> Kevin, couldn't, uh, doesn't, uh, as I'm looking at this, option three addresses one of the reasons they thought a standalone was because we didn't think we could do an eight lane pool, at least we weren't looking <coughs> at it at that time in the current location. No, they could. Were they looking at that at that time? Because if the standalone became a standalone because we could do it wasn't the, because of the eight, eight lane. lane that wasn't the Why did they want the standalone? Do you remember? Because of the cost, if I'm not mistaken, that they estimated for what it would take to Renovate? keep part of the structure we currently have, redig the footprint, to dig it out more. The cost was relatively close to building a brand new building. Jackie, yes. Okay. Also considering um, that if you filled in you'd have school, that then you could take care of some of the space space issues, so you would possibly move the fitness center into the current um, pool area okay. and the fitness center would become part of the cheer dance part where now they're in a cafeteria or and then redoing the locker rooms you'd have locker rooms leading into the weight room area as well yeah addressing you're taking away the wrestling room and even with the seating and how far back you'd have to push things you're pushing stuff close to 116th street yeah. and the way everything is set up keeping the bare bones of the structure and doing all the stuff around it was pretty expensive but going back to the collapsible bleacher design instead of the fixed bleacher thing they initially had with uh, building some walls around it and taking out a third of the wrestling room Going back to collapsible bleacher design and the glass overhead doors eliminated any problems with, with uh, the wrestling room up, up top. No, still, 
Well, scheduling issues, yeah, maybe. But I was talking about removing, I was talking about removing a space altogether because initially the plan was to build cement block around there and put in permanent, permanently installed bleachers versus just accordion bleachers like that, you know, expandable bleachers I like they have now. That, but it, would still be an issue, though. it could be a scheduling issue, but it wouldn't change the use of the space forever. It'd be on. I mean, how many swim meets could we have a year? You know, it would change it five. occasionally. So it would change it, five it or six. and of those five or six times, I don't know how many times it would overlap with wrestling practice. You see what I mean? It's, it would be a pretty minor impact. I was a wrestler. I'd want to defend that space too, but, but I mean, it would have a pretty minor conflicting impact versus the original put, just put bleachers and cement block up there. So, but my, my concern, I mean, I don't know if you're talking about taking the dollar amount out of there altogether or not, but, you know, the last, the last time we did a survey on this was the <coughs> referendum. And the referendum had 4.6 million for the pool combined with 2.3 million for high school projects. So 6.9 million was a question and it failed. And this is one question for 7.8 million on a pool. Um, I, I'm saying if, if you're gonna have a dollar amount on this, it, it needs to be something significantly lower. And I really hope you can find that looking over the, the previous stuff that was all the work that was done before. We can look into that. Well, then I'd like to know. Then I'd like to know the difference uh, that the uh, beyond just two years of inflation, that uh, that um, three point five million dollars gets us. But in the apples to apples interest, right now your option three is apples to apples at three point five million dollars more. And I just like to know why and if it's possible to get that down. I understand. I'm just asking Quinn, I'll say again. I'm ask I'm just asking him to I'm just I'm just I'm just asking him to look at it without coming without without coming back and saying it's apples to oranges versus apples to apples, that kind of stuff. I'm just saying Take as apples to apples with the option three. I'm just asking you to take a look at it, and I'm saying I would be curious. I don't know about the rest of the board to know where where the why it's 3.5 million more than like if they severely the old if they if but that's it, on, let him answer if they severely John, just a second if they oh, would John, if they would severely um, if they severely underestimated something that should be obvious to you and I'd be interested to know. So when I suggested that I would get the information through Megan this week, you were the first one that said, well, no, we discussed it now. So all of what you just brought up multiple times could have been solved when I said I would get you the information after this meeting. I keep being told we act as a board, right? You're asking for information that he doesn't have. I'm offering That's to fine. get him that information so he yeah. can respond to your question. That's fine. Keep asking. No, so you didn't say I'll get you information later I, in this week. Look, look, the conversation's going know, south, John, and we don't need to do this. Driving south. Oh, I tried I to segment okay. it before. All right. To say I'll get you the information. It's late. I'm leaving. This is getting ridiculous, guys. Come on. This is this is ridiculous. You said that you would get with him and talk with him later in this week, and I think and I that's not what you said. You said you get with him and talk to him later in the week, and I thought we should have the discussion as a group. And we are. But if you, if all you're trying to do is give him information later in the week, that's fine. Go look at the tape and you'll see what you said. We do things as a group. <coughs> you said we would discuss it later. We do this as a group. Could we talk about options one, two, sure. or three? I'm totally confused now. I really like putting in some numbers, getting rid of one or two, 
and sticking with three. And the standalone thing, Kevin, I get your concern there. I think at this point, uh, I guess I would be okay moving ahead without that question because we can't get numbers soon enough, right? And we don't even have a spot for it. It hasn't been explored. Is that why you're saying we can't put that in? Well, is that not what he said? you got to figure out what you want. Right. You know, so it's not been explored at all. So, well, I think. Yeah, outside I, I of the committee. The pool, that's what we need to debate the cost. I know. If, if the new pool is <coughs> the only thing, if, you, if the new pool or nothing, I'll let you know that. Or if you say no, it's a new pool or if it's something we got, we don't like it, but we will. Tell me that. Or if it's that, those two options, and <coughs> fill it in. Okay, I can't go along with that. Can we what? take that off the table? We are not going to fill it in. What I would like to know is, is there a different cost for the sixth lane to re fix the sixth lane? Well, it's option one isn't an option. Option one is going to solve some pool lining, flooding, plumbing things that the water keeps running and things like that. That's not going to address the concern that's stated in the paragraph. That should be built into number seven. Correct. So it's mm -hmm. really, yes. It's really is this Okay. It's yes. Got it. Pool. What Got I would, it. What I okay, I'm with you. What I was focusing on was a Let's new pool in the, existing, in the existing area or done. because... Okay, then if, if you agree to that, then, then what I would recommend is we create a section that looks just like all the mm -hmm. other pools. And we have one image and we say, here's where it would, yes. here's what it would be, here's a little, I don't know what they did with Plano, kind of a little pull out, here's what it looked like, what it would cost, what it's going to cost. That's why <coughs> adding option one into question number seven a little tighter yeah, makes that. sense. So it would be yep. a functional pool with that sort of access in. So it's a new option pool with an image of all the things. With that, I want it back to what I was saying before and we talked about and you were throwing it off the table. I want it, so if we have two options there, I want one option, a pool in the existing area that we're talking about here. And the other option would be the natatorium and you could even throw in what you would do with the old pool space. But I I know you, you obviously don't have numbers on all that stuff right now, and that's fine. But that's really what I want there, because they did explore that, and the majority of them said, this would be a viable option based off of whatever research they did. To not even address it and to put it in there and say, this is going to cost this much, is not going to make them happy. So what I would say, I looked at the numbers, and they had 7.8 million for a new net accordion, but that did not include any parking lot or roads yeah. or I mean, it literally said plunk it in the middle of the softball field. Yeah. Hmm. Did that include so lots? Yeah, and I did. And well, I to Lori's point, I was at those community yeah, meetings, too. There was no architect. There, there were yeah, no people who were in this and that. So their pool, a new natatorium they have here is 7.8. But the question becomes, and if you put that as an option, yeah. we're going to have to, in order to, I mean, it could be another half a million dollars to reconstruct. I mean, what you would have to do for <coughs> traffic. Millions yeah. that we could do to that. So we almost, we're throwing a design out here tonight that would literally require, I mean, that could shift your whole traffic. I mean, there's a lot of stuff besides, so their numbers were just giving us a ballpark and it's 6 point whatever it was on here. Yeah. Okay, that's their number. And 1.3 would be that. So, the, I mean, they had those numbers. Not, you know, I'm not here to debate this. And I get it, brand new pool, you don't have to fix anything because you can go within the system. Yeah. But it didn't address the location and any potential domino outside and driving and our high schoolers and middle schoolers and schedule and all of 
standalone natatorium. There's got to be some direction in order for them to even. I mean, because they have to stand behind the numbers that they're going to put in the Yeah, I, I agree. I Whereas just don't. the advisory committee didn't have to stand behind their numbers. But what do we? Love, but what do we say support. to them? Is my question. What do we say when we get the people that come back and say this, that, and the other thing, and they come back? I mean, I don't like it not being addressed at all. But we're, ba we're basing it off of these other things. There's a lot of factors we haven't addressed. It could be a feasible option. We haven't gotten into the details of it. You see what they didn't address in their thing. It still could be a feasible option. If this is 7 point, if what we're planning on doing based on what's on here is 7.8, the other one 7.8, we find out it's maybe a million more to do a whole separate thing and fix the other stuff. It could be a viable option for a million dollars more to have your own separate thing. But how do we transport people in the middle of winter? In the middle of winter, people go outside all the time. You've got to park your cars, transport people. Walk across the street. You walk across the street, over there, just have to get down in the pool. There's yeah. locker rooms and other things. Yeah, why you why why yeah. you the, the, the idea is that then it's more public access and availability, <coughs> and it gets its own it space. The usability from the high school, though, that's up there. The usability of the high school, not necessarily. Well, kids have to go outside after they've been cleaned. We're talking about a high school swimming classes versus the swim team and all the other events that they're meant for. It expands the ability of it to be used for other things in the overall communities. The events that are held at it, the club events, the other things that can happen to it, it expands the possibilities. Just from my experience, if you do that, it will reduce the support for it. People don't. Well, I understand that. I'm not saying that's what we should do, but I'm saying putting two options out there and addressing the issue makes sense. Well, I guess if we do sense. that, then we just have to pause I know the costs are going to show that, down. but the idea is that this has been addressed before. Why? I guess we didn't look into it at all when it was brought to our attention. We're only looking at this. I mean, where did the 7.8 come from that we had that you have in but, there? But I think it, it, all this about when we're reassessing, right? The previous referendum also <coughs> was proposing brand new public corners, and we're not proposing that. The previous referendum didn't propose a mandatorium at all. But I'm saying, I guess, where did the 7.8 come? Is that just comparable to what Muskego is no. potentially planning? We built a new space program, which we believe this would be, and we assume what we'd be able to reuse an mm -hmm. existing building, which includes the square footage, which is locker rooms and tennis, which is important. Yeah. Uh, the existing, the additional square footage here, too, a code required deck clearance for mm -hmm. all, so we'd upgrade all the existing uh, locker rooms to include the spectator and team seating targets that we established. Mm -hmm. We worked with Water Technologies Inc., which is one of the specialty pool contractors. They supported us in building the budget for you mm -hmm. for these projects. And so um, all of that done based on lots of assumptions, right? Because we haven't sat down and designed the <coughs> So yes, we did reference some recently bid projects and recently cost estimated projects just as a gut check comparison. Mm -hmm. So I, again, this is very conceptual, but we're confident in the number based on I think I'd be comfortable. I'm, I'm really sensitive too to what the committee recommended in keeping them on board with this referendum. I'm, I've been big on that all along. But the question Kevin asks is, what could we say to them? And I think, I think the fact that this is a whole <coughs> new pool, which is not just a renovation, I think, I think that they would be okay with that because it is, it isn't a standalone, but it is still a completely new facility compared to what we were looking at before. So I think that, that, I guess in my mind, uh, I would be comfortable going back to the committee saying we did discuss it, we did look into it, we didn't price it all out, but at this point we decided curriculum-wise it wasn't the smartest thing. Right, bigger.
this is what we think, again, that Bill had talked about kind of the crosshairs of tax tolerance and highest priority, what that potential referendum is. And then after that, there's going to be lots of other things, right, that don't fall into that. We'll also have data on what are the highest priorities in those codes, which will also sort of tell us it's not just that yeah. we think the code is supportable today, but where does it rank even compared to the rest of the community in those areas as well, which I think is the one thing we didn't get as a prior effort. Right? But prior Kevin. Kevin knows the swimmers. He knows this. He knows that population. And if you really think they're going to vote it down because it's not a standalone, then we should take a look at that. I'm not saying they're going to vote it down. I'm saying that you're going to piss off the people that came to us that said, we thought this was better. We did this, 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 and this without giving them hard facts of, well, you gave us this number. This tells us this. This is the total number that is sig substantially greater than what you put on here makes more sense to go this way. Without giving them that information, <coughs> we run the risk of them coming back to something they didn't work or we didn't work on. Plus the notations of how it negatively could negatively impact our high school PE program, but the middle school PE program with changing the space, the softball space out there and that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it has negative impacts um, kind of throughout the district uh, doing that, but I don't know if that was addressed with that idea. I certainly respect what you're saying about you know, they came up with this idea, and then if we don't even address that idea somehow and just flush it right away, I think we need to address that idea somehow that we that we considered it. But, but I mean, it does sound like that the the cost would skyrocket and the the negative impacts throughout the district would keep rolling. So, and I'm not will I'm I'm personally not willing to delay the project at this point. <clears throat> I think we can address the concern through communication. Delay this whole thing to get more numbers. Thank you. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be possible to do a quick meeting with the original group and kind of explain, here's where we're going with the current process, here's what this survey is going to include, and might give a chance to get more information from them about where their numbers came from and have them un understand where your numbers are coming from and just have them, they get the information first because they were part of that process before? proving to them and saying, okay, you put 4.6, that's great, but you need to factor in million here, a million there, and this, sure. and this, and this, and then that adds up, so it's really not a viable option instead of just saying, yeah, it's going to be too expensive. All right, so what if we say, um, we ask, would you support a referendum that provides funding to build a new pool, an estimated cost range, maybe? Okay, and then if yes, <coughs>
think you have the data that you do. And then we could also ask a prioritization question to identify the top priorities. But, but I think if you asked one question uh, to encompass a, a range of prices, I think the top end of that range is going to make people say no to the question uh, altogether. <coughs> I think if you're saying, would you would you support uh, uh, building a new pool, you know, to the estimated uh, cost of five to twelve million dollars or something like that, I think people will see a twelve million and they'll go, no, because they don't want to risk saying yes to something that would potentially go that high. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I just think that it, the, yes, but I think the upper end for a particular way of doing the project would taint. The uh, the lower end of. So we could just pass a new pool, assume the new pool adjacent. I guess if you had a suggestion, go to the group and say, can we take the new location off the table? Yeah. And they say that's fine. Then we'll just pass the can we do that? What he just said, repeat that. Well, we can, we can go to the group, explain we've got two <coughs> options. We believe one would be a weak negative asset concrete that would be too expensive. Are you okay with that? If we get that submission, it will address your concern. Not worry the about that. Which will address them right. That's a plan. That's a plan. I go for that. Okay. Anybody else? I didn't get a response. I'm not sure what we're doing that. Jonathan, you had hesitation about uh, uh, talking to the, you sound like you had hesitation about talking to the committee, or about her talking to the committee or something. I just want to know why. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, I thought, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, slack it.
so, so we've got the master plan. We're trying to identify priorities, and we're going to ask the funding support question. Yeah, by the way, we haven't even talked about that question yet. Um, and so we we ask we establish a tax tolerance for what I'm calling the I don't want to call it that the everything. Can you tell us the research on one versus two questions and what happens? Okay, if you, pools are killer, okay? Um, <laughs> you were going to say that. <laughs> 26 projects that went to referendum, three failed, two were associated with pools. Okay? And so you say there's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I mean, I, we've been talking about it the whole time. I don't see how it has a chance at all, really, when I'm looking at this whole thing. I mean, with the funding support thing, for our, just as a separate question, shouldn't there be an additional one that says this 12, 18, 24, 30, 44 and a half or something? Well, that's the question but, for the board is how high do you want to go? But, I mean, with how, the, with how this is going and the millions of things that are on here that <coughs> could be considered a need for all these schools, I don't even see how it's going to even come close to passing at all. If you put up a pool against, you need to fix all these other structures and all these other things, and nobody's going to vote for pool. But we haven't decided what are the things yet, Kevin. So we not even ask the question? I'm going to throw that out there now because that's... I wouldn't... <coughs> that's what I'm yeah. trying to understand. I think the pool's got to be on there. I mean, a lot of people spend a lot of time just to be on there. But when, I mean, you're talking about all these ones that you've done. When have you seen one pass, and how did it pass? Give me some insight into that because right now I'm looking at... Forty-four million dollars of other things that people are going to say. Well, absolutely. Why would we even consider doing a pool when there's these all of these other things that we should be doing? Well, if you uh, if you have X epic in your backyard, like Rona has, you vote. <coughs> and Prairie was the second question and voted fail the first time, <coughs> and then came back the following election cycle after there was a separate panel with a question about the pool. And so that was a separate. What about Greenfield? Didn't they pass a referendum? 
Didn't Greenfield <laughs> pass a referendum and the swim team worked really hard to get that through? A while ago. Yeah, that's a not that long ago. How many years Seven, ago? Seven, eight. Was it that long Nine ago? I thought ago? they built their new pool much more recently. It opened in 2009, 2010. Okay, but they were, so was it a separate it question? It was part of their whole school, if I'm not mistaken. Was it not? I don't know. I, I think it was part of their, and it wasn't a new school, it was renovations to their school, so they kept a portion of their old school to make it not a new school. Right. Yeah. But they also didn't have $34 million of money to spur building more for the school. So I guess that, that's the other way you get to it. So it's kind of the last thing in line. I don't know about that, but they didn't have it out there anyway. <laughs> okay. So what I'm hearing is it needs to be on the survey or it's not. We need to take it off or not a survey. Leave it on, separate question. Because I thought that the com that the group said eleven million. Didn't they have a just based on the property use, it wasn't necessarily the dollars and what the impact was <coughs> Right. And so now that's totally gone. I mean that's three years ago where I know. our impact on tax rate is totally different. So it was you might look at, at that, that. hate to just pick numbers. I'd rather it be based on what makes sense to the projects we could get done. Well, I, think, I think 15 would be too darn close to the whole issue. Uh, you, might, <coughs> you might have to come back to me and ask for some, some 41 or 42 dollars or something like that. With that? I'll <laughs> give 100 bucks from Fort Fund 46 right, right now. Right. Or give us enough options. Oh, 
I liked it. But if we're giving them the smaller amount, are we really going to do that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lower we it. could. We could do 15. <coughs> I, I like the way you have it. I think it brackets the the HCE project nicely and gives us an idea of, of if people want to infer that that 18 is for HCE then and they think that's what we need, then they'll probably vote for that. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I bracket. People are, are kind of, they, they do the math. Yeah, they Oh. I feel like if you don't give them the plug, then you're kind of like, well, most of the rays are going to go to 15, 20, 20, 25, 30 percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm good with whatever. Do you want to go? We got to. I like the way that it makes is. sense. I can live with it. It'll cost more. It would cost more, Quinn, but if that's what they want. Well, we're, then we're just doing what we did. Right. I'm not married. 15, 20, 25, and 30. I could support that too. Yeah, the only downside is if that group's at 11, they're going to be unhappy. Even though I know everything's changed. <laughs> Just remember, some people have a well, number in their head. Now we're up to 15. You can talk to them about that, too. Yeah, right. I mean, I think yeah. the knowledge is right. That's the of the variables, like we've talked about, you know, the density of the system. I mean, it's all relative. And so yeah, we need to go for a lot. We need to go away from the tax, but a lot smaller. That's wonderful. Oh, good news. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you much for your work. Thank you. All right, now we'll go to 5C, administrative report of Jackie. Someone? We forgot Jackie. We forgot Jackie. Can she come up here for that? Does anybody have any questions at this wonderful hour about summer school? <laughs>
you. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was You know what? Do you know what level of professional it's staffed by? It's uh, I think it's like nurse practitioner. NP. Sure. You just might want to announce we're having that board workshop. Is that next week? The board, another board meeting next week on the 18th. See you at what time? Now. Yeah, Greenfield, I believe. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow against Greenfield. Oh. Okay. Surely. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.